All over the world, health practitioners advocate for mothers to breastfeed their babies as it supports mother-to-child bonding. With a week-long commemoration of the World Breastfeeding Week, the Ghana Health Service used the opportunity to state the importance of breastfeeding to both mother and baby. Inform people about the importance of protecting breastfeeding. Anchor breastfeeding support as a vital public health responsibility. Engage with individuals and organizations for greater impact and galvanize action on protecting breastfeeding to improve public health. Ladies and gentlemen, breastfeeding remains central to survival, health and well-being of women, children, and the nation. Optimal breastfeeding, which entails initiation of breastfeeding within the first hour of birth, followed by an exclusive breastfeeding for six months and continued breastfeeding for up to two years or beyond offer a powerful line of defense against all forms of childhood malnutrition, including wasting and obesity. Breastfeeding also acts as babies for the as first vaccine, protecting them against many common childhood illnesses. What happens, though, if through no fault of theirs, some mothers are unable to produce enough milk for their child? In Grain, founder of the Talkative Mom mobile app and mother of two, shares her experiences with breastfeeding. When it comes to breastfeeding, I struggled a lot, um, especially with my first. You know, I had read everything there was to read. I had um, a mom app I was reading every day. So I thought, OK, I had everything on lock. Once I pop out the baby, I'm just going to put him on the breast and then that's it. And then it didn't happen immediately. However, one thing that I want to note is that the hospital I gave birth to, the midwives over there were very, very nice. I mean, they went ahead and said, you know what? You don't have breast milk. Your breast milk hasn't come in yet. Be putting baby to the breast, but we'll mix formula in the meantime and then give it to the baby. So I remember they had mixed none one and they fed him. And at that time, this was in 2017, um, I didn't have a lot of information when it came to formula feeding because all I knew was, oh, you have to breastfeed your child. So I felt very uncomfortable about that. And I felt like such a baby. I was like, I was, I felt guilty. I felt really bad. So I decided to try everything. So I remember at the hospital, I called my sister-in-law and then I was just asking her, what can I do? And she said, oh, just massage your boobs with sheer butter. I did that, it didn't work. She said she also had to use a syringe to pull out her nipple because it was inverted. And mine was also inverted. So, and that's one of the most painful things you can ever do. So I used a syringe, you know, I did everything I could do. The Ghana Health Service says in no way should formula be a replacement for breastfeeding. Additionally, WHO recommends that countries must implement and reinforce the International Code for Marketing Breast Milk Substitutes at all levels. It is vital to ensure that breastfeeding mothers do not get targeted by industry or marketing professionals who want to jeopardize their natural ability to, for breastfeeding by promoting formula feeding. How much support is there for some of these mothers who already feel they are failing because they are unable to breastfeed their babies and may be gradually sinking into depression? You, you know, they'll be staring, the judgment, everything you could tell is like, people are like looking at you like, really, what are you doing? And a lot of times people feel, oh, this thing is already in our head because we are already feeling guilty. Yes, we are feeling guilty, but you can also tell, it's like we are not dumb, we can tell. For some other women, they, it was said to them directly or they were publicly embarrassed. For me, it wasn't said to me directly, but it was something I could tell and I could feel. So that was, you know, one of the things that I, I experienced with that. But even apart from them, aunties, older women, church, people from church, you know, they're all asking you, oh, man, are you breastfeeding? Like, it's like a concern for everyone. And I understand it's a valid concern because breast milk, I understand that, yes, the colostrum is very important for them, but... What I believe is that if a mother cannot breastfeed, I don't think that you, it should be insisted. I think they can encourage, but I don't think it should be insisted that they by all means have to breastfeed. I believe that that's why there are all these other options. 
of formula, and so they can formula feed. Mrs. Quagrain says she would rather advocate for keeping babies fed by any means necessary, especially when the survival of their children depends on it. I'm not, I'm not the kind of person who's going to insist on breastfeeding alone or formula feeding alone. My thing is that the baby should be fed. So when I say pro-feeding, I just mean that the baby should be fed, whether it's breast milk or formula, do not starve the baby. And at the end of the day, we just want a healthy baby over a dead baby, a fed baby over a dead baby. So what, whatever is going into the, the baby system, if it's breast milk, if it's formula, please just feed that child. Especially if you cannot pr produce breast milk, it's, I mean, come on, you can't leave the baby to die. And there have been instances where that has happened. I actually shared a story like that. There have been instances where the baby died of dehydration or the baby did get jaundice because they were dehydrated. So instead of like, okay, insisting it's going to be breast milk or nothing, please just feed that baby. That's why I say I'm pro-feeding. Whatever it is that the mother chooses is the right one. Some mothers who cannot express enough breast milk to feed their babies have to find other alternative means. And at that point, they require all the support that they can get. Reporting for City News, my name is Eno Safo.